In today's tutorial, I will show you how to create stunning black and white images using the black and white tool in Aperti. First, we will look at the definition of this tool and then I will show you and describe every single controller that you can use. To finish it off, I will show you how you can use it to create beautiful selective color effect and how to use this tool in combination with masking. Now starting with the official description of this tool. The black and white tool in Aperti is designed to give photographers precise control over the monochrome conversion process. It allows you to selectively adjust the brightness of individual color channels such as red, green and blue making sure that each photo element is accurately represented in grayscale. Additionally, the tool also offers the option to bring back touches of color through saturation control. And this gives you the ability to create subtle but powerful selective color effect. Ideal for photographers looking to emphasize tone, contrast and structure, this tool offers both creative freedom and technical precision for crafting timeless black and white portraits. Now finally moving into the application where we are already in the editing module looking at the two sample files for this episode. Now if you want to follow me along and do the edit on your own computer, all you need to do is to jump into the description of this video, follow the link there and download the sample files now. When you have them ready, import them into the application and we can start. Starting with this image of the lady in the pink dress, let's have a look at the tool and its controllers. To do that, we need to navigate into the main editing toolbar, where we're gonna click on the icon with the three sliders on it. By doing that, we will reveal the essentials panel. Here we have a number of different tools allowing us to develop the image. I have already applied simple development using the develop raw tool. However, you don't really need to do that for this specific tool because we're going to be focusing on the black and white tool. Now, as you notice, to open the tool, you simply click on the little triangle in front of it or the name of the tool. When I open the black and white tool, the only thing available right now to control is the convert to black and white button. Well, as you guessed it, it's really that simple. We're just going to click on that to turn the image into black and white and click on it again to bring it back to normal or the color. So once we click on that, we will have a number of different options. First, we have the switch between luminance and saturation. After that, once we apply any of the edit, we have a two additional controllers in the top right corner of the tool one that allow us to reset the tool and one to see before and after for that specific tool. Well, anyway, moving back to our controllers. So we have the convert to black and white button again that allow us to turn it black and white or bring it back to color. After that, we have the luminance and saturation. Each of these switches have a number of additional sliders red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, and magenta. Well, as you guess it, these sliders allow us to adjust luminance of these specific colors and then also saturation of these colors. Now we will focus on saturation in a moment, so let's come back to luminance. For luminance, we can now go ahead and basically take, for example, the red slider and we can make any of the reds in the image brighter. So by doing that, we are increasing wherever the red was on the original image. So if I bring it back, you can see that there is some red on the flower. There will definitely be some red on the dress and also on skin. So by increasing the red slider, we are making all these areas brighter. But of course that we can go the other way around. We can make them darker by bringing them down. So by doing that, we are adding more contrast on the skin. You can see following the light, this part is still a little bit brighter, but this one is darker. So it creates nice contrast. And like this, it works for all the other colors. So you can play around with the yellow. Again, there is often yellow on the skin tones. So actually the red and yellow are great for adjusting 
the luminance of the skin. Then we also have the green, which on this image is on the plant. And then we have the cyan, blue, and also the magenta. Now, of course, that depending on what's on the image, then you will be able to use or not use these sliders. So for us, for this image specifically, it's the red and yellow that really makes the difference. So that's the luminance and that's how you use the black and white tool. However, what about the saturation? Well, for this, we're going to select the second image where we have a lady in the red dress with the red decoration on her head. Now, what I would like to do is to turn the image into black and white and only have the red color standing out. So to create that kind of selective color effect. Well, we can do that very easily with the black and white tool. What we need to do is to again convert the image into black and white and this time go into the saturation section. Here again, we have the same sliders, but what we can do, we can actually reintroduce these colors back into our image. So we mentioned that there is lots of red and yellow in the skin, but also there is the red on her dress. So if I take the red slider and increase it, you will see that while the rest of the image and the rest of the color still stay black and white, we are now bringing the red back, creating a really nice selective color effect. We could do other things. We could try to reintroduce other colors by pushing the yellow, which is on that wall there, green if there would be any, and of course, cyan, blue, and magenta. But for this example, let's do the red. So we're going to increase it. Now, when you focus on the red, you will notice that it will also bring a little bit of her skin color back, which I think is actually a good thing. It makes it a little bit more gentle or natural. However, it also brings this red at the back which we don't want to. We just want the red dress and that decoration in her hair. So what we can do? Well, we're going to use masking. So let's just add a little bit more red somewhere around here. And then we're going to jump into the masking by clicking on this icon with a square and a little frame around it. Now we are in the masking tool where we need to click on the little plus sign button. Here we can select any of the tools. We're going to go for the brush and we're not going to paint anything. We're just going to click on save. By doing that, we now have a mask ready, mask on the entire image. So all we want to do, we want to avoid the person. Now you can, of course, use the brush to brush the person away. But the easiest way to do this is to come back. Now click on the little three dots on that new mask and go into the subtract. This way we can remove part of the mask. Now here, what we can do, we can simply click on the person or persons. And by doing that, just like magic, it will search the image and basically subtract or remove the person from our mask. Once we do that, we can now, while still having the mask selected, go into our essentials panel. And here what we can do, we can again click on convert to black and white. By doing that, it will turn everything other than the person into black and white. Now it did pretty decent job. However, there are a few spots we need to fix. Again, the hair decoration and maybe a little bit here on the hair. So how can we do this? Well, first we're gonna zoom in using the wheel on our mouse or command or control plus, then move around. And after this, again, back to our masking here, click on the three dots, again, subtract. And for this little adjustment, let's just use brush. With the brush selected, let's just make it a little smaller, adjust the softness down to, let's say, 50 and stick to 100. Moving on the image, we can now very easily brush away these areas and that way making sure that we have the color still in the hair piece. So something like this. Um, this looks all good. Now moving to the hair, here we need to do the opposite. We want the black and white to be here so the red doesn't leak through. Well, what we can do, we can switch our brush from erase into paint and very easily just paint over the hair. Once that's done, we can click on save and then zoom out and have a look at the result. So just like that, we have very easily created beautiful selective color effect using the black and white tool the saturation section, and also a little bit of simple masking. So one more time, using the black and white tool, what you need to do is to navigate into the essential section. 
Here, open the black and white tool and start with the convert to black and white button. After that, you can adjust the luminance for the main colors. And if you want to be more creative, you can also use the saturation and play around with that to create very beautiful and attractive look. Now, before we going to finish, just a quick reminder that this tutorial is powered by our brand new professional portrait LUT bundle. This brand new bundle is focusing on portrait editing and it will allow you to use the 170 expertly crafted LUTs to quickly and easily adjust your portrait photos. Now, this bundle is, of course, compatible with the Aperti software, but you can also use it with Luminar Neo, Lightroom Classic, Photoshop, Premiere Pro, DaVinci Code and so much more. Now, to get the best possible price for the Professional Portrait LUT Bundle, simply follow the link in the description of this video. And to find out more about it, head to our website, cleverphotographer.com. And that's the end of today's tutorial. If you enjoyed it, make sure you like and share it. And if you have any question about today's topic or about Aperti, then write it in the comment section under this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss on any of our future content focusing on Aperti and Luminar Neo. For today, my name is Jacob Bors and I can't wait to see you in the next video.